साधकम सदा विमुक्ति साधकम कलाधरावत सकम विलासी लोक रक्षक अनायकनायक विनाशिते भैत्यक नाशु भाषु नाशक नमा तौ विनायक नेतरातिरम न बोधितार्क भास्वर न मत्सुरार्जर न काधिकापदुद्धर सुरेशर निधीश्वर गजेशर गणेश महेशर तमाश्रिए परात्पर निरंतर समस्तोकशंकर निरस्तदैत्यकुंजर दरे तरो दर वर वरे भवत्रक्षर कृपाक क्षमाक मुदाक यशस्क मनस्कर नमस्कृता नमस्को भस्वर अकिंचनार्तिमाजन चिंतनोक्ति भाजन पुरारी पूर्वनंदन सुरारी गुवचरुवण प्रपंचनाश भीषण धनंजयादिभूषण कपोलदानवारण भजे पुराण वारण अंतकात्मज अचिंत्यूपमीन अंतराय कृतन हृदंतरे निरंतर वसत योगिना विचितयामि सतत महागणेश पंचरत्न आदरेण योन्वह प्रजलपति प्रभात के हृदय स्मरण गणेश आरोगतामोषता सुसाहिती सुपुत्रता सामिताभूति अभ्युपैति सोचिरा अभ्युपैति सोचिरा
सहनावतो सहनो भुनक्तो सह वीर करवाबह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिदिषावह ओ शातिशा ओ यं ब्रह्मेन्द्रुद्रमरुत स्तुन्वि दिव्यस्तव वेद सांगपद्रमोपनिषद गायतीयसावस्थित तदेन मनसा पश्यंती योगिन देवाय तस्म नम देवाय तस्म नम नो वी एंटर इन टू the 11th chapter of bhagavad gita and the name of the chapter is vishva roop darshana yoga vishva roop darshana yoga vishva means world roopa means form darshana means vision so what is this chapter all about this chapter is all about darshana of the roopa of the lord in the form of vishwam darshana of the roopa of the lord in the form of vishwam vision of the form of the lord in the form of the world vision of the form of the lord in the form of the world meaning what you are not seeing the lord in a particular form you are not seeing the lord as krishna form or shiva form or rama form you are seeing the lord in the world form the world itself is seen as the lord vishwam itself is seen as ishwara world itself is seen as the form of the lord jagat ishadhi darshanam you are seeing the world only but now you are seeing the world in the light of a new knowledge and what is that knowledge the knowledge is this world is the manifestation of the lord so in this way when we experience the lord as the world then that is called as yoga yoga means to unite uniting with the lord experiencing the lord how are we experiencing the lord we are experiencing the lord as the world itself in the vishwa form itself so vishwa roopa darshana yoga means experiencing the lord in the form of the world vishwa roopa darshana yoga this is the culmination of all spiritual evolution so with lot of sadhanas finally what is it that we gain what is the vision that we gain after all spiritual sadhanas the vision is sarvam brahmamayam rere sarvam brahmamayam everything is bhagwan alone so why is this name given to this chapter this name is given to this chapter because 
Arjuna makes a request to Bhagwan for this vision. And because Arjuna made this request, Bhagwan gives this vision to Arjuna. And the whole chapter is about Arjuna gaining this vision and describing this vision. So therefore, this chapter is rightly named as Vishwarupa Darshana Yoga. Right. Now with this introduction, we will enter into the chapter. Let us chant the first verse. Om Shri Paramatmane Namaha Atha Ekadashodhyaya Vishwarupa Darshana Yoga Arjuna Uvacha Madanugrahaya Paramam Guhya Madhyatma Santnitam Yatva Yoktam Vachastena Mohoyam Vigato Mama Madanugrahaya Paramam Guhya Madhyatma Santnitam Yatva Yoktam Vachastena Mohoyam Vigato Mama The chapter begins with Arjuna's statement. So this verse is spoken by Arjuna. Arjuna Uvacha. So what did Arjuna speak? Arjuna says, Bhagavan, thank you very much. Bhagavan, I am extremely grateful for you. I am extremely grateful. Arjuna, why are you extremely grateful? Bhagavan, I am extremely grateful because I am Mama Mohaha Vigataha. Vigataha, gone. What is that which is gone? Mama Mohaha Vigataha. This I am. This. This. My delusion, Bhagwan, this delusion, this delusion which you are also aware, this delusion because of which I collapsed in the chariot, I was totally confused about what is right and what is wrong and then finally I surrendered unto you. Bhagwan, that moha, that delusion because of which I was not able to take clear decisions. I was not able to decide the right from the wrong, <coughs> choose the right from the wrong. Bhagwan, this moha of mine, which made me completely helpless and hopeless. Bhagwan, this moha is gone. Bhagwan, thank you very much. I am indeed grateful to you. But Arjuna, what did I do? Bhagavan, you alone removed this delusion from me. Because Tvayayat Vachaha Uktam Tena Tena Because of that. It is because of that that my delusion is gone. Because of what? Tvayayat Vachaha Uktam It is because of your words of wisdom Vachaha, the words, the words of wisdom spoken by you. Bhagwan. it is because of these words of wisdom, because of which my delusion is gone. Words of wisdom, of what? Adhyatma Santnitam Vachaha, these words, these words of wisdom, which are related to Adhyatmam. Adhyatma means Adhi Atma. Pertaining to Atma. Pertaining to self means what? The knowledge related to self or self knowledge. This Adhyatma Vidya. Bhagavan, it is this Adhyatma Vidya which made this huge difference in me. Which transformed me. Which took me out of this ocean of delusion. <laughs> 
Bhagwan, these words which you have spoken, this spiritual knowledge which you have given, it is this knowledge which has done this wonder. So, Bhagwan, I am indeed indebted to you. Bhagwan, what a great knowledge you have given, Bhagwan. Adhyatma Santnitam. Santnya means name. So, Adhyatma Santnitam means this wisdom which is spiritual. Bhagwan, I consider this knowledge as what? Paramam. Paramam means supreme. Bhagwan, this knowledge which you have given to me, I consider this knowledge as the supreme. Why? Bhagwan, directly I have experienced this. With this knowledge, how all my delusion has disappeared. How I am gaining tremendous amount of peace of mind. Bhagwan, it is this knowledge which has given me a direction and purpose in life. Bhagwan, it is this knowledge which makes a person free from the bondages of birth and death. So, indeed, Bhagwan, this knowledge is supreme, this knowledge is paramam. Bhagwan, Though this knowledge is supreme, this knowledge is also guhyam, a great secret. Why is it a great secret? Bhagwan, I consider it as a great secret because majority of the people, they have no idea about what this knowledge is. It is such a rare knowledge and because of its rarity, I consider it as secret. Bhagwan, majority of the people have no value for this knowledge. They have no value because they don't know the glory of this knowledge. They don't know that it is this knowledge which can put an end to all their sufferings. The problem is caused in life because of the ignorance of the self. So therefore, solution to all problems of life is only the knowledge of the self. This Adhyatma Vidya, these people don't know. They consider very many things of life as a solution to problems in life. But actually, the fact is, it is a self-knowledge which can put an end to all problems. This the people don't know. So, therefore, they don't value this knowledge. And therefore, this knowledge is very, very, very rare in this world. We can say this knowledge is almost a secret in this world. The secret truth people don't know. What is the secret truth? The secret truth is all my problems are because of my ignorance of the self. This is the secret truth. So therefore, people unfortunately don't give value to this knowledge. But Bhagavan, you have given this rare, supreme, highest knowledge to me. Why? Mad Anugrahaya in order to bless me. Bhagavan, you have blessed me with this greatest knowledge. So therefore, I am indeed grateful to you. I am ever indebted to you, Bhagavan. So therefore, this first verse is a verse filled with gratitude. So, it is 11th chapter now. So, Bhagavan has been teaching from 2nd chapter onwards. So, this is a transformation that we see in Arjuna. See the transformation because of this knowledge. It is very interesting to see the transformation of Arjuna from the first chapter. So, what do we see in Arjuna? In the first chapter, we see a confident Arjuna entering into the battlefield. What does he say? He says, Hey Krishna, Hey Achyuta, Sena yor ubhayor madhye ratham sthapaya me Achyuta. This is the way Arjuna enters into the battlefield. Arjuna says, Bhagwan, O oh Achyuta, Take this chariot of mine into 
and place it at the middle of the two armies madhye senayor ubhayor madhye in the middle of the two armies place this chariot arjuna why do you want to have your chariot there o krishna i want to see all those people who have come to fight i want to teach them a lesson with this attitude with this confident attitude arjuna enters the battlefield in the first chapter then what happened he just glanced at the two armies and what did he find acharyan matulan bhratran putran pautran sakin tatha what does he find he finds that in both these armies all his near and dear ones his relatives his uncles his in-laws teachers sons grandsons fathers grandfathers his own near and dear ones were standing on both the sides of these armies ready to fight then what happens to this confident krishna i mean confident arjuna this confident arjuna becomes a deluded arjuna because he was so attached to all these people he did not find their two armies he found their my own dear and near ones then what happened he was totally deluded and this deluded arjuna became a blabbering arjuna so what does arjuna say the entire first chapter is only the blabbering of arjuna arjuna says oh krishna what are we going to do we are going to kill our own near and dear ones have we ever thought of the end result of this war the end result of this war is going to be death and destruction our own near and dear ones are going to be killed by us either they will kill us or we will kill them and what will be the end result of this war all these women they will become widows children would become orphans there will be anarchy everywhere because soldiers are all gone the looters and the robbers they will rule the kingdom there will be total chaos anarchy lawlessness disorder oh krishna have you ever thought of the consequences of this war so therefore what i suggest is let us withdraw from this war we don't want any kingdom no at least we are wise people we are able to think about the consequences of war these people who have come to fight they are greedy for kingdom so therefore they are not able to think the far reaching consequences of this war so these people are all ignorant and foolish oh krishna we should not be like them we should withdraw this is what arjuna says in the first chapter but as arjuna starts giving advice to krishna what happens to arjuna arjuna becomes totally weak to such an extent that he was not even able to stand up inside this chariot the bow and arrow fell from his hand and he collapsed inside the chariot so thus we see a collapsing arjuna confident arjuna becomes a deluded and blabbering arjuna this blabbering arjuna becomes a collapsing arjuna then what happens fortunately this arjuna seeks guidance from bhagwan so this collapsing arjuna becomes a surrendering arjuna in the second chapter how does he surrender karpanya doshopahat swabhava pricchami tvam dharma sammudha cheta yachreyasya nischitam bruhitan me shishyaste ham sadhimam tvam prapannam bhagwan dharma sammudha cheta bhagwan am to really confused about what is dharma and what is adharma 
and because of this confusion i am not even able to stand up i have become totally weak bhagwan even to raise the bow i am not able to do it this indecision in me this confusion and delusion in me has made me totally incapable forget about fighting the war i have become incapable even to stand up so bhagwan please guide me guide me as to what is right and what is wrong please give me this right knowledge bhagwan i surrender unto you i take refuge in you please consider me as your disciple this way arjuna surrenders unto bhagwan so that collapsed arjuna becomes a surrendered arjuna then what happened from there onwards bhagwan starts giving the geeta teaching bhagwan smiles and looking at the condition of arjuna and bhagwan says arjuna the very fact that you are collapsing the very fact that you have lost all your enthusiasm energy and strength that itself shows that what you have is not knowledge what you have is only ignorance what you have is only delusion because what is the law gatasu na gatasu shap nanushochanti panditaha panditaha na anushochanti arjuna this is the law a person who is wise a person who has wisdom na anushochanti he never grieves grief and wisdom cannot go together weakness and wisdom cannot go together wisdom is always associated with strength with clarity with peace with cheerfulness so arjuna the very fact that you are grieving and collapsing that itself shows that whatever you have said they are not the words of wisdom they are only the words of delusion so thus with these words bhagwan starts guiding arjuna so as the teaching progresses in the second chapter where bhagwan gives the highest knowledge the knowledge of the self what happens to arjuna slowly we find arjuna recovering from that collapsed state how do we know arjuna recovers we know arjuna recovers because he starts participating in this discussion by raising questions so this surrendered arjuna becomes a mumukshu arjuna when he asks this question bhagwan i want to know more and more about this man who has this knowledge such a wonderful knowledge is there and we can gain this knowledge bhagwan i am truly interested in knowing the nature of a person who has gained this knowledge sthit pratnyasya ka bhasha samadhistasya keshava sthit dhikim prabhashet kimasit vrajet kim bhagwan what is the nature of this man of realization it is my intense desire to see myself as a man of realization in this in the future whatever knowledge you have given bhagwan i want to gain it so here we find mumukshu arjuna so that surrendered arjuna becomes a mumukshu arjuna a person who is truly desirous of self knowledge and then what happens to this arjuna this mumukshu arjuna becomes a doubting arjuna in the sixth chapter arjuna doubts his own qualification in gaining this knowledge so such an arjuna he says bhagwan chanchalam himana krishna pramathi balavadridham tasyaham nigraham manye vayuri vasudushkaram so this doubting arjuna says bhagwan you are saying that to gain the spiritual knowledge the most important thing is the control over the mind and the senses 
बट भगवान आई थिंक देन आई एम द मोस्ट अनक्वालिफाइड पर्सन टू गेन दिस नॉलेज बिकॉज दिस मेन दिस माइंड इज चंचलम प्रमाथी बलवत दृढ़म भगवान दिस माइंड इज सो फिकल इट इज सो डिफिकल्ट टू कॉन्कर दिस माइंड इट इज सो टर्बुलेंट इट इज लिटरली इम्पॉसिबल भगवान टू कॉन्कर दिस माइंड एट दैट टाइम वॉट इज भगवान से अर्जुना असंशय महाबाहो मनो दुर्निग्रह चरम येस यू आर राइट इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू कॉन्कर द माइंड बट अर्जुना डोंट से इट इज इम्पॉसिबल इट इज डेफिनेटली पॉसिबल हाउ इज इट पॉसिबल अभ्यास न तो कौंते वैराग्य गृह्य विथ अभ्यास प्राक्टीस विथ वैराग्य विथ दिस पैशन इट इज डेफिनेटली पॉसिबल टू कॉन्ट कर द माइंड वेरी मेनी हेव डन इट अर्जुन वेरी मेनी हेव डन इट बहवो ज्ञान तपसा पूता मन भाव मागता वेरी मेनी हेव डन इट सो देर फोर यू कैन ऑल्सो डू इट then again arjuna asks a question bhagwan what if i am striving hard in the path of spirituality but before i attain enlightenment suppose i die then bhagwan all those effort that i put won't it become a waste again arjuna asks his doubt then bhagwan says o partha naiveha namutra vinashastasya vidyate नहि कल्याण कृत कश्चित दुर्गति तात गति अर्जुन नो 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 वाट एवर एफर्ट यू हेव पुट वाट एवर अटेनमेंट यू हेव गेन्ड वैल पर्स्यूइंग स्पिरीचुअलिटी थ्रू युअर साधना वाट एवर यू हेव गेन्ड अर्जुन यू आर नेवर गोइंग टू लूज इट सपोज यू डाय यू बिकम ए योग भ्रष्ट यू डाय बिफोर अटेनिंग द हाइएस्ट देन वाट हैपन देन वाट हैपन सीज इन द फ्यूचर बर्थ you are born in wonderful family where whatever you have gained in the past birth you become associated with it and then you continue your journey from where you have left nahi kalyana krut kashchit durgatim tat gachati whatever you have gained arjuna you are never going to lose it so therefore whatever you have gained it remains with you so in this way bhagwan starts answering every question of arjuna and slowly this doubting arjuna becomes a cheerful relaxed relieved arjuna when he sees that his questions are beautifully answered by bhagwan and bhagwan is full of what you call is a great inspirer bhagwan says apiche sudurachara bhajate mamananya bhag sadhureva samantavya सम्यक् व्यवसितो ही सह क्षिप्रम भवति धर्मात्मा अर्जुन ईवन इफ यू आर द ग्रेटेस्ट सिनर इन दिस वर्ल्ड ईवन देन इट इज नॉट इम्पॉसिबल फॉर यू टू अटेन दिस ईवन द ग्रेटेस्ट सिनर्स आर नॉट डिस्कॉलीफाइड इन दिस पाथ ईवन दे कैन अटेन दिस हाइएस्ट वेरी सोन क्षिप्रम वेरी सोन क्षिप्रम भवति धर्मात्मा even the greatest sinners can become great saints and the liberated ones if they choose this path and follow it sincerely so in this way through inspiring words bhagwan really fills enthusiasm and courage in the heart of arjuna and then what happens by the time we reach 10th chapter arjuna becomes a devotee arjuna full of devotion love respect and reverence for bhagwan what does arjuna say in the 10th chapter if you see vistarena atmano yogam vibhutim cha janardana bhuya kathaya triptirhi shanvato nasti me mrutam arjuna says bhagwan please keep on telling your glories i am not satiated by listening to these glories bhagwan please go on and on and on it is filling my heart with great joy listening to your glories and that's how this 10th chapter comes into existence so we find a devotee arjuna there and now we are in the 11th chapter now how does arjuna introduces himself 
mohoyam vigatah mama so here arjuna says bhagwan i am delusion free so in the 11th chapter we find a delusion free arjuna of course by the time we reach 18th chapter arjuna says nashto mohah smritir labdha tvat prasadat maya chuta sthitosmi gata sandehah karishye vachanam tava bhagavan nashtah mohah all my delusions are gone fully gone hmm. sthitosmi gata sandehah i am free from all kinds of doubts now karishye vachanam tava i will do whatever you say so this is what happens to arjuna by the time we reach 18th chapter and then after that arjuna is again confident arjuna ready to take the battle courageously so see that transformation in arjuna first he was a confident arjuna then he becomes a deluded blabbering arjuna then he becomes a collapsing arjuna then we see a surrendering arjuna then we see a mumukshu arjuna then we see a doubting arjuna then we see a relieved cheerful arjuna then we see a devotee arjuna and now in the 11th chapter we see a delusion free arjuna see the transformation and by the end of gita teachings he again becomes a confident arjuna so when he entered into the battle he was confident then he lost his confidence then with the gita teaching again he gains his confidence now this is exactly what happens to all of us in the beginning we are doing the wrong thing but we are very very confident that we are doing the right thing then what happens then tragedies come misfortunes come our ego is crushed punctured all wrong things are done and we are properly beaten we suffer and when we suffer we become humble we become introspective we seek solutions regarding life and then we stumble upon spirituality through some talks etc and then we start getting solutions to all our life's problems through such spiritual teachings and then we start practicing it and as we start practicing it we become more and more happy cheerful peaceful contented and when we start seeing these results in ourselves we become more and more confident and enthusiastic or our all our doubts also vanish and then slowly again we become confident in facing the battle of life so this transformation that we see in arjuna is actually a transformation that we see in ourselves when we step into this spiritual path right now coming back so what does arjuna say arjuna says bhagwan all my delusions are gone because of your blessings because of your teachings you are blessing in the form of this teaching so i am indeed grateful to you so arjuna's expression of this gratitude continues in the next verse also let us chant verse number 2 bhava pyayo hi bhutana shrutau vistar shomaya tvat tah kamala patraksha महात्म्यम्यय हि भूता श्रुत विस्तर शोमया कमलपत्राक्ष 
மாத்மியமி சாவிய lotus eyes lotus hands lotus heart lotus feet and sometimes lotus seat also all our gods and goddesses they either stand or sit on lotus so what is the symbolism of lotus that we have to understand <laughs> lotus represents perfection lotus this flower represents perfection what is the greatness of this flower this lotus is also called as pankaja pankam is dirty water panka pankaja the one which is born in dirty water is called pankaja lotus so this lotus is born in dirty water but it remains untouched by dirt this is perfection that lotus has beautiful color but that color has come from where it has come from this dirty water but the color is not dirty the color is beautiful lotus has a wonderful fragrance where has it come from it has come from the nourishment of dirty water you see the foul smelling dirty water is unable to bring out that foul smell in lotus that is the greatness of lotus that lotus takes nourishment from dirty water but it is not bringing out the foul smell of the dirty water it is bringing out fragrance again bees hover around this lotus means what it has got nectar the dirty water is converted transformed into nectar see the dirty water is converted into beautiful color beautiful fragrance sweet nectar this is the glory of lotus means what bitter experiences have only transformed that flower into a better fragrant sweet beautiful flower and another glory of this lotus is it is ever open to light it is ever closed to darkness whenever the sun rises it is fully blossomed fully opened up and when the sun sets it closes now these are all the properties of mahatmas the great ones the perfected ones they are also living in this world full of miseries tragedies full of impermanence full of uncertainties now this is the dirt of this world this world is absolutely uncertain this world is absolutely impermanent lot of tragedies mishappenings misfortunes everything is there in this world but we find a mahatma ever smiling like a blossomed lotus ever smiling in spite of living in this miserable world this is called as perfection the ability to smile ability to be happy and cheerful and contented even when there are so many shortcomings in the world and in the bmi also so many imperfections at the body level mind level intellect level at the world level relationship level even then here is a person who is ever smiling ever contented ever cheerful this is how we must live our life and like that lotus this person is ever open to the knowledge to the higher knowledge and is ever closed to ignorance this is the greatness of this man he has kept his senses eyes ears etc opened to the higher knowledge and he is closed to all foolishness and delusions of life 
this is how we must be. So therefore, the point is this, lotus represents perfection. So whenever we say lotus eyes, lotus hearts, so we have to understand, lotus heart means a perfect heart, lotus eyes means a perfect eye. So here, Bhagavan is addressed as Kamala Patraksha, the one who has beautiful eyes, as beautiful as lotus petal. So, what is the beauty of eyes? Of course, Bhagwan's eyes are beautiful, no doubt. But what is the symbolic meaning of this? So, what is the beauty of eye? That, rather those eyes which are able to see the perfection in others, divinity in others, the self in others, such eyes are beautiful eyes. So, those eyes are not stuck with the external form, those eyes penetrate deep and see the inner essence which is the Supreme Self. So, a person who is able to see the Self in all, such a person's eyes are beautiful eyes. So, Bhagwan's eyes are beautiful because he sees the divinity in us and not the external imperfection. Therefore, his eyes are beautiful and such beautiful eyes will have concern, will have love, will have compassion for everyone. So, such eyes filled with love, concern, compassion and truth, such eyes we can call Kamala Patraksha, beautiful eyes. So, here Arjuna is saying, Bhagwan, your eyes are beautiful because you have never paid attention to any of my imperfection. <laughs> Arjuna is telling from his own experience. Just imagine in the beginning, how did he enter the war field? Senayor ubhyor madhye ratam sthapaya me achuta me, me ratham. He achuta, my chariot. You are a mere charioteer. This chariot is mine. I am the owner. So keep this chariot in between the two armies. Now see the tone. Me ratham. There you will find a shade of arrogance, a shade of superiority complex, whatever. But what was Bhagwan's attitude? Bhagwan, like a servant, very humble, he just obeyed Arjuna and kept the chariot wherever he wanted. See, you know, Bhagwan was not at all affected by these words. This is a greatness, you see. Bhagwan's eyes are not seeing the imperfections in others. And moreover, when Arjuna was blabbering throughout the first chapter, Bhagwan was silently, patiently, without interfering, he was just listening. Just like how a mother listening to, listens to the blabbering of her child, Bhagwan was listening to Arjuna. And later when Arjuna collapsed, it is the very same Bhagavan who raised him from that confusion and in detail explained the spiritual knowledge. So here you see Arjuna says, Bhagavan Tvattah Vistarashah Shrutau. Bhagavan, I have heard Shrutau. I have heard, Vistarashah Bhagavan, you have in detail explained everything. Bhagavan, how compassionate you are. Whatever questions I have asked, with lot of patience, you have in detail described everything to me. This itself shows how much compassion, how much concern, how much love you have for me. Tvattaha from you, Vistarasha, in detail, Shruta, I have heard. Arjuna, what did you hear? Bhagavan, I have heard, Bhutanam Bhava Apyayau. 
Bhava. Bhava means origin, a paved dissolution. Bhagavan, I have heard from you how all beings, they originate from you, exist in you and dissolve in you. This way, Avyayam Mahatmyam, I have heard. Tvattaha Avyayam Mahatmyam, your imperishable glory, Bhagavan, I have heard. So in the 7th chapter, 8th chapter, 9th chapter, 10th chapter, what is the essence? The essence is this. All beings, all things and beings of this world, they have no independent existence, they exist in Bhagavan alone. They originate in Bhagavan, exist in Bhagavan and dissolve in Bhagavan. So therefore, Bhagavan is the substratum for the entire universe. Now this is the Mahatmyam of Bhagavan, glory of Bhagavan. We don't have independent existence, we have only borrowed existence, what exists is only Bhagavan. This is Bhagavan's Mahatma. As in 9th chapter, we find a beautiful verse glorifying Bhagavan. What is that? Gatir Bharta Prabhu Sakshi Nivasam Sharanam Suhurta. Nivasa Sharanam Surta Prabhava Pralayasthanam Nidhanam Bijam Avyayam Gati, Bhagavan says, I am the Gati, I am the goal of all beings. Bharta, I am the supporter of all beings. Prabhu, I am the Lord of all beings. Sakshi, I am the witness in all beings. Nivasaha, I reside in all beings. And all beings reside in me also. Nivasaha Sharanam, I am the ultimate refuge of all beings. Suhrit, I am a friend of all beings. Prabhavaha Pralayaha Sthanam, I am the origin, sustenance and dissolution center for all beings. Nidhanam, I am the very treasure of all beings. So this way, Bhagavan defines himself, describes himself. So this is the Mahatmyam. And what kind of Mahatmyam is it? Avyayam Mahatmyam. Avyayam Mahatmyam means what? Imperishable glory. So this glory of Bhagavan is never going to perish. This glory is going to be anadi and ananta, beginningless and endless. This is the glory of Bhagavan. So the glory of Bhagavan is the world has no independent existence other than Bhagavan. So Bhagavan, I have in detail elaborately listened to this great truth, your great glory. Bhagavan, now I have a request to make. What is that request? Let us see verse number Three. Eva me tat yathatatuam Atmanam parameshwara Drashto mitchami te rupam Aishwaram purushottama Eva me tat yathatatuam Atmanam parameshwara Drashto mitchami te rupam Aishwaram purushottama Yes. So now Arjuna is addressing Bhagavan as Parameshwara Purushottama. He Parameshwara, Parama Ishwara, the Supreme Lord, the one who rules over everyone is called Ishwara. The one who controls everyone, the one who guides everyone, one who leads everyone, one who tames everyone. So this ultimate ruler is called Parameshwara. Ish means to rule. So, O oh Supreme Lord, Purushottama, this is another term given to Bhagavan. Purushottama, Uttama Purusha. Supreme being, we can say. 
supreme being who are we we are all human being so we are all beings now see this term is beautiful being what is being that which exist is called a being be means to exist so anything which has existence is called a being so who is bhagwan he is uttama purusha supreme being why is he called supreme being he is called supreme being because he is the one who is giving existence to every one of us that being from which we borrow our being is called supreme being so he is called as purushottama bhagwan in you we exist therefore you are purushottama by you we are controlled therefore you are parameshwar so we exist because of you we are controlled and guided because of you we reach the ultimate destination because of you so you are not only giving existence to us you are also guiding correcting and finally taking us to our destination so therefore you are parameshwara also so therefore bhagwan tvam atmanam yatha atha the way you have described yourself etat evam eva it is that way only tvam atmanam yatha atha till now the way you have described yourself you have glorified yourself whatever you have told about yourself त्वम आत्मानम यथा आथ एतत एवमे भगवान आई हैव टोटल फेथ इन यू व्हाट एवर यू हैव सेड इज एब्सोल्युटली राइट एतत एवमे इट इज लाइक दैट ओनली इट कैन नॉट बी अदरवाइज इफ यू हैव सेड इट इट इज लाइक दैट ओनली भगवान आई हैव टोटल ट्रस्ट टोटल फेथ इन यू मींस व्हाट यू डिजर्व ऑल ग्लोरी Bhagwan, whatever glory is seen in this world, whatever vibhuti is seen in this world, everything belongs to you alone. Whatever glory is seen in a thing, in a being, in a situation, whatever strength, whatever intelligence, whatever power, whatever splendor, glory, whatever. good great thing is present in anything or a being bhagwan it doesn't belong to that thing or a being it belongs to you alone in this i have no doubt bhagwan this is true i have full faith bhagwan now i have a request what is the request ichami भगवान आई डिजायर दिस अर्जुन वॉट डू डिजायर द्रष्टुम इच्छा भगवान आई वॉन्ट टू सी आई डिजायर टू सी ए पर्टिकुलर थिंग अर्जुन वॉट इज इट दैट यू वॉन्ट टू सी भगवान ते ऐश्वर रूपम द्रष्टुम इच्छा आई डिजायर टू सी युअर ऐश्वर रूपम ईश्वरीय रूपम that divine form i want to see bhagwan i want to see that form of yours where you are the complete controller of the whole world i want to see that form where everything is existing in you without you nobody has any existence no thing has any existence you are the sum and substance of everything so in and through everything i am seeing only you and you alone bhagwan is it 
possible to have such a vision where even when I am seeing the world, I am seeing only you. Just like when I am seeing the ocean, when I am seeing the waves in the ocean, I am seeing only water. When I am dealing with all the ornaments, I am seeing only gold in the same way. When I am dealing with things, beings and situation, when I am dealing with this Vishwam, Bhagwan, is it possible to see your Rupam? Is it possible to have the Darshanam of your Rupam while having the Darshanam of Vishwam? This is the question of Arjuna. What is Arjuna's question? Arjuna's question is, Bhagwan, as I am seeing the world, I must be able to see only you. As easily as, yes, as I am seeing the ornaments, I am seeing only gold. As easily as, yes, as I am seeing the waves, I am seeing only the water. In the same way, Bhagwan, is it possible? To see you and you alone in everything. Bhagwan, I have heard that great Mahatmas who have this God vision, this Titapratnyas, etc. The Mahatmas, you yourself have said, Mahatmanas tu maam partha devim prakriti maashritaha bhajantya nanya manasaha jnatva bhutadim abhyam. Bhagwan, you yourself have said that all these great Mahatmas, they see me and me alone everywhere. Bhagavan, such a vision, is it possible for me to gain it? Bhagavan, I, I, I accept, I admit that I am not qualified for it because I have not done any sadhana. But Bhagavan, by your grace, by your blessings, because you are Parameshwara, you are Purushottama, you are Yogeshwara also. So Bhagavan, is it possible for me to have such Ishwariya Rupa Darshanam, such Aishwaram Rupa Darshanam. This is the question of Arjuna. So what is the response of Bhagavan? We will see in the next class. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makaschit Dukkha Bhag Bhave Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om